Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and in this video I'm going to show you guys 10 easy photo effects that you can learn in Adobe Photoshop. So let's get started with effect number one which is splitting the color channels. So to do this you want to have your photo open and then head over to the channels menu. Here you want to select just one of the channels so I like selecting the red one and while you're working on the red color channel you want to distort it in some way. So you can do this by going to filter, distort, and I like using the shear distortion. So here you just want to take this straight line and add a slight warp to it. For the undefined areas I like using repeat edge pixels and you remember just be very subtle with this and then when you press OK you should see that you've moved just the red color channel over to the right. So now when we turn the visibility of the, all the color channels red, green, blue back on they're now misaligned slightly so you have that red color channel separation which gives you just the right amount of that glitchy color split effect. So our next technique that I'm going to show you guys is how to create a soft blurry glow effect on your photo. So this time we're just going to right click our photo layer and convert it to a smart object. This just means that we can add smart filters on it which means we can adjust the filters afterwards. So next I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. So you want to add a slight Gaussian blur just so things become a little less visible. So I'll do 27 and press OK. And now since it's a smart filter, I can click on the slider of the Gaussian blur filter and then I can adjust the blending mode of that filter, which you would normally have to make multiple layers for. So now that we have blurred up the image, we can set it to something like overlay, soft light, or hard light, or any of these really to create a cool dreamy glowy photo effect and you can also adjust the opacity as the strength of the effect. So that's how to create a nice soft glowing of color. The next technique I'm going to show you guys is how to crush or lift the blacks of the photo to get that faded and film looking color. So to do this there's lots of ways but one quick and flexible way is to go to layer, new adjustment layer and add a curves adjustment layer. The curves adjustment lets you adjust the brightness and contrast of different parts of the photo. So you have the dark parts on the left and the whites on the right. So to raise the level of the black, we're going to drag our bottom left corner up, adding that faded look. But since we're in the curves channel, we have some flexibility by adding another point and bringing it down the side so that we have a more flat line effect, which gives us that matte black look that we can play around with to our liking. So that's how to get that faded photo effect which softens up the black levels in your photo and smooths everything out. So the next easy photo effect I'm going to show you guys is how to create a two-toned photo image kind of like you might see in an Apple Music advertisement or Spotify. And to do this you just need to go over to layer, new adjustment layer, gradient map. So in the gradient map you can tell Photoshop what color to make the dark and light parts of the photo. So although that's a cool effect right there, that black and white effect, if I double click on the gradient, I can double click on each of the color swatches and make it whatever color I want. So for the highlights, I can choose something like a bright green. And for the shadows, I can choose something like a dark red. Now you notice the colors in this case are kind of inverted. They don't match up with the highlights of the original. So if you actually press reverse on the gradient map, you can take things back to their normal highlight and shadows. So that's how to create that two-tone color effect that you can then go on top of and add text and different things. Next, I'm going to show you guys how to create a quick pop art image without doing any difficult illustration work. So this is going to work best with photos with a clean backdrop. However, it's not necessary. You just want to go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Threshold. This is going to split your photo into strictly black and white and you can adjust the slider to a point where you have the proper amount of detail that you wanted from your original photo. From here, there's a lot of different ways you could take it. You could actually use the same gradient map technique from the previous effect to colorize this since it's already in black and white for you. However, I'll show you another way. You can go to layer, new fill layer, and choose either a solid color or a gradient. I'll choose a gradient just to give you some flexibility. And you can set a custom gradient. In this case, I'll just use a preset. You can adjust the scale and the angle and the type of grading you have and even click and drag on it to adjust the positioning. And then once you're happy, press OK and set this gradient or your color fill layer to multiply. Since the original photo was black and white, 
setting it to multiply is only going to take over the white portions of the photo. Alternatively, you could set it to things like screen to only take over the black portion of the photo and get really creative. The threshold is a nice starting base for you to create a cutout or pop art style of your image and you can use all these other effects to colorize it. So for our next effect, I'm going to show you guys how to get that color halftone dotted effect, kind of like a comic book. So just good practice, let's right click and convert it to a smart object so we have more flexibility and we can add smart filters. And then you want to go to filter, pixelate, color halftone. Now there's all different types of ways that you could separate these channels to get different effects. But if you set them all to 45 degrees, you'll get a nice even dotted effect. The max radius is how large you want the circles to get. So the larger you do it, the more you're going to be able to see the circles. The smaller you do it, the more the original photo will show through, if you know what I mean. But I'll just keep it at 10 to show you guys a good average example and press OK. Now this photo is at 25% visibility, so you can't see what's going on. But when I press Command 1 or zoom in, you could see the effect that happens. It's that color halftone effect where everything becomes dotted. So that's a really cool effect to play around with. You can then add different color adjustments. And you could double click on the smart filter since it was a smart filter and test out what it might look like at different pixel radiuses, so bigger. And if you were to separate some of the channels a little bit, then you see you get that kind of red, green, blue separation. All right, so for our next effect, I'm gonna show you one quick way to get a dramatic black and white photo without making too many adjustment layers and sliders. So if you head over to layer, new adjustment layer, black and white, you'll desaturate your image and you can play around with the different color channels. So I want the reds to be darker or brighter. It's a really powerful tool to get the exact shade of black and white that you want out of your image. However, if you want a quick way to add contrast to your photo after this point, I like to just simply right click and duplicate that black and white layer and then set the blending mode of the second layer to overlay or soft light. And you'll see that adds a lot of contrast as well. If you want to adjust the strength of that, you can lower the opacity to 50 or 70%. However, it just adds another layer of contrast by kind of doubling up on the original black and white effect. So a cool little technique to know and keep in mind you can apply blending modes onto any adjustment layer to combine with your original photo. For example, this would just be kind of a dramatic but desaturated effect if we took off the original black and white. So just a good technique to know overall. For this next technique, I'm going to show you a quick and flexible way to add light leaks onto your photo. So if you go to layer, new fill layer and choose gradient, we can actually create light leaks out of this gradient. So a good starting point is the foreground color to transparent gradient. And if you double click on it, you can add a few color swatches. So make sure the first one's white and then you want to add a color swatch right next to that. Let's make it yellow. So we're going to kind of construct this light leak. Next, let's make another color swatch and let's make it red. So now we have a white to yellow to red color swatch. Press OK. And now here's where you can adjust the light leak to be wherever you want. You can move the angle around so it comes out of whatever side of the photo you want. You can also click and actually drag on the gradient to position it exactly how you want. You don't want the whole thing being super white. And then you can also adjust the scale to see how stretched out you want it to be or how compact you want it to be on the edge. You can also choose the style of the gradient. So like radial, angular, reflected, and all different types of stuff. Now obviously it doesn't look right like just laid on top of it like this, which is why you want to click on your gradient fill layer and change the blending mode from normal to something like screen, or if you want a more strong effect, something like linear dodge. But I like keeping it at screen, and then you can readjust things or lower the opacity if you feel like it's too strong. Also keep in mind, you don't have to use red. You can use whatever color you want if you want to get more abstract with it. But typically these light leaks are red if we're trying to make it look like real light leaks. All right, so getting down to the last couple of effects here, another really useful technique is to create a vintage color effect with one color fill layer. So to do this, you go to Layer, New Fill Layer, Solid Color. Now before you press OK, set the blending mode of this color fill layer to Exclusion. 
Now I'll press OK and you should see that whatever color you're applying, it's going to be on exclusion. So the brighter it is, the stronger, the darker, the weaker. So if you set your color to a really dark navy, you'll see what that does is it softens up the whites and makes them more yellow and then takes the shadows and makes them more blue. You can see the brighter you get, the stronger that looks. However, you can also use different colors. You can use a more purplish color for that green and purple vintage effect or red. Whatever you want to do, it gives you that cool, soft look. If you find that it's too strong, you can always lower the opacity or darken the color you use. But this is what it looks like before and after. Gives you that soft, vintage color in just one step. All right, for our final effect, I've actually taken two photo layers and I've put them in the same document. So you could drag one photo layer onto another photo or open a new document and open two photos inside of it. However, I pretty much got this photo of this woman on top of this overhead shot of the street. Now, if you want to blend together photos in Photoshop, a cool and easy way you can do it is using blending modes and opacities. So I can take this photo of this woman and I can set it to a blending mode like lighten. And what that does is it, it'll only show the photo of this woman in areas where it's lighter than the photo underneath. So you can see that the light parts of the stripes and the cars are still showing through underneath. However, the light parts of the stripes on the road are still showing in this case. So it creates some cool blending of shadows and interesting compositions that you can make of this. Of course, you can play around with all of the different blending modes. They all do something slightly different and you can get your own unique effects. Additionally, you can just use the opacity sliders to adjust the strength of each layer or you could even just keep it at normal and lower the opacity to blend together two photos in a cross dissolved type of way. But there you have it, those are 10 really easy photo effects and hopefully you're able to pick out a few that you liked or learn a couple cool new techniques in the process. If you guys want to learn more Photoshop effects, definitely check out my channel. I have playlists on there with hundreds of tutorials that break down these and different effects more thoroughly. And definitely subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all new future videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.